Meeting call to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Present. Present. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner Gonzalez? Absent. Commissioner McGibbon? Present. Commissioner Scrivener? Absent. Commissioner Gonz uh, Saragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to approval of, of the minutes of March 20, 2024. Uh, is there any public comment? Seeing none, any commissioner comments or questions? Uh, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, ooh, sorry. You, I'm, you're I'm, jumping, I'm jumping ahead. Mr. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Couch, can you uh, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Everybody stand. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for correcting me, Mr. Knox. And we, right, do, we do not have any commissioners attending by video conference tonight. So Thank you. Okay, we'll move to on three. to the item number four, approval of minutes for March, March 2024. Uh, the minutes, do we have, well, we have no public comment. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions? I move approval. Motion second, by, Fowler. Motion by Couch, second by Fowler. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to item number five, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission. The commission on any matter not on this agenda and over with the with, over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and an address for the record before making your presentation. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody interested in speaking? No. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to uh, item number nine: general businesses approval of, of monthly expense list uh, number twenty-four zero three. Uh, do I have commissioner comments or questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by, by Couch, second by Clark. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Krupp? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, moving on to B, office lease renewal. Continue, Mr. Knox, uh, your, your executive officer report, please. Yes, the budget committee uh, met earlier this month and asked for additional information, and the budget committee met again prior to tonight's meeting and requested and recommended that we go month to month while negotiations continue with KernCog to potentially move the office to this location. So it's my recommendation that we temporarily go month to month uh, lease until we can come up with a, either come up with a suitable deal with Kern Cog or not. That buys us some time to, to negotiate that. Do you need a motion on that? No. Well, I gotta give a uh, public comment real, uh, is there any public comment? Do, uh, do I have a commissioner comments or questions? Ms. Ms. Fowler has a question. Um, Mr. Knox, so our, uh, we were told that we could have a month-to-month -month situation for a while. How long is a while? Temporary. Um, I, I did reach out to property management. They said that they could work a deal short-term. Uh, we did not speci specify how long that would be, but I, I would hope would we be able to come up, to come up with a deal within two, three months at the most. I, I don't, I can't speak for Kerncog's side of the negotiation, so how fast they're willing to move. So, but that's my intention. Mr. Just, Sir, do you have a question? Right. Uh, I'm not quite, I can't remember what was spoken about this issue last time, but when is your lease, 
uh, going to expire at the current place? Uh, the new lease begins June 1st of this year. So you have a deadline approaching. Yes. Okay. All right. Just <laughs> this is going to be a close deadline to me. Okay. Just thanks for that. Which is why we'd go month to month to give us some time to to decide. And property management is the same for this building as it is for, for our building. Oh. When you say property management, is that private or public property management? Private. Because I think M the County of Kern has a public management folks. And yeah. It's private. Okay. M MK Atkinson is, they actually right. own this building and manage it. And Houchins own the building we, we are currently in, but MK Atkinson uh, manages for manages it. The property for them. Thanks for that clarification. Yes. That okay. okay. Do we have any other questions or comments from any of the commissioners? I have a motion by. Do you, need a, do you need a motion or you it just? It says vote required yeah. here. So. Okay. I'll move your recommendation. I'll second it. Okay. Motion by Couch, second by Crump. May I have a uh, vote, please, Madam Clerk? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to C, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. Executive Officer Report, Mr. Knox. Staff will be attending the CalAFCA workshop in the Bay Area next week, so they will be gone for a couple days. Uh, that's one item. Number two. Uh, we plan to bring back the Los Angeles Community Dis Service District formation uh, at next month's meeting. So that'll be, take a significant amount of time to go through that process for a formation. Uh, so be, be aware of that. That's a big item for us. Uh, I guess I'll mention this now. Uh, the change in the guard will happen next month as Commissioner Crump completes his four years on the commission. I, we would be amiss if we did not recognize alternate Albright, who, even though he sat only for a few meetings, would often watch our video of our meetings online. Uh, as Commissioner Crump leaves, we will be welcoming Commissioner Eric Bruin, who is the mayor of Ridgecrest, to next month's meeting. That is my report. Thank you so much. Okay, moving back to uh, item number seven, notice of public hearing. Our 2024-2025 annual budget uh, final consideration of, of the 2024-25 proposed final budget. The budget for the current LAFCO is determined by the commission and funded by the county of Kern. Incorporate cities with Kern County. and Independent special districts that Kern LAFCO is designated as the principal county. With each category of, ag uh, of agency paying one-third of the budget per government code section 56381 subsection B1 and subsection A, a proposed budget is required to be adopted prior to the final budget being considered per government code section 56381 subsection A. Executive Officer Report, Mr. Knox. At the last meeting, the commission approved moving forward with the budget as presented with a 50% carryover going to pay down the CalPERS unfunded liability. There was also a referral to the budget committee to address the lease and possible change in life insurance for the staff. Uh, the lease was just addressed in the previous item, and it was that will still fall within our budget. On life insurance, the committee recommended uh, increasing the amounts of life insurance for staff for two hundred thousand for executive officer and hundred thousand for staff members, and uh, this would come out of the LAFCO, LAFCO budget. Uh, as you were all here last month, I'm not inclined to do a line-by-line -line analysis of the budget again. If you have any questions about any line item, I'm happy to answer. With that, my recommendation is to approve the 2024-25 budget as presented, take 50% of the carryover and apply to CalPERS on fund liability, uh, pay for the additional life insurance premiums, uh, and that's my recommendation. Okay, thank you. Um, do uh, there, there's no is there any public comment? Seeing none. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions? Seeing none. 
Do I have a motion uh, for approval? Motion, Crump. Second, Couch. Motion by Commissioner Crump, second by Commissioner Couch. Uh, Madam Clerk, may I have a vote? Commissioner Ione? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, now we're gonna, we have no closed close session. Uh, I have uh, Commissioner Saragosa. Uh, do you have a, before we adjourn, do you have a? Okay, <laughs> this is kind of spur of the moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I am. A, yes, or should we continue with the, the presentation for? Commissioner? You got, oh, we can do that presentation now. Okay. Um, Commissioner Crump is, may, may want to leave after after this. Yeah. Since he's a one on one really doesn't do him any good. <laughs> That's why we're doing it. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Crump, Mr. John Crump, has been with the uh, LAFCO for four years, I Correct. believe. 2020 to 2024. So, and we all remember 2020. <laughs> yes. Um, and... Uh, in appreciation of your service and hard work as commissioner on LAFCO, we have provided you, or we will be providing you with this beautiful plaque, and it's from LAFCO to Mr. John Crump. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I can't see you, but I assume I should stand up. <laughs> but uh, if I stand up, I'm not going to be close to my microphone. Anyway, so on behalf of LAFCO, thank you for your service. You're a dedicated public servant, and we wish you well. All right. You say thank you, but Blair fired me earlier. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to pass it on so everybody can look at it. And here's the uh, cover. Beautiful. Was that covered in the budget? It was, yes. <laughs> they pulled it out of your stipend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Saragosa, for those kind words. Now, uh, do uh, there's no further items to discuss. Should uh, they have a motion to adjourn? We we can we can do the 101 within the meeting session or outside. I'm not sure it really matters. You want to do it now? Well, my my attorney is saying do it in. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Crump. Thank you. Absolutely. Everyone have fun. Mr. Clark, have fun on the budget. <laughs> okay. Safe travels. Get Port City a honk on the way in. Well, I'm going the other way. Oh, there you go. Are we <laughs> no. I'll be um, back over we're here. We're going to go ahead and do the PowerPoint on the recording. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I say something? Yes, uh, sure. Right. I believe, uh, and, and my uh, fellow public commissioner can comment, that. Um, one reason I think we're doing this is that anytime there's a new public commissioner on board, new LAFCO commissioner on board, it would be nice if they had kind of an orientation. And if this is videotape and this is uh, comprehensive enough, perhaps we could have them review it even before they submit their candidacy. Maybe they don't want to do it after they view this, but in either case, we should archive this somewhere. I'm way, I'm way ahead of you. Okay, so just to let you know, I do, it should be taped, and it should be for public consumption. That's my two sec, two cents. Okay. Yes. We're moving on with the executive officer report for 101 presentation. Yes. Uh, my name is Blair Knox. I'm the executive officer of Kern LAFCO. I've been asked to provide an introduction to the Kern Local Agency Formation Commission this evening. We're recording this presentation for a dual purpose. This is an educational opportunity for commissioners, and this recording will also be available on our website that hopefully will be up soon. Some of the items that I go into detail about are items that I would assume commissioners may already know, uh, but, I, but I cover these here tonight so that residents of Kern without prior knowledge of LAFCO would be able to understand the basics. Does this work? Yeah. Oh, nice. So what, what's ahead? Let me start with the questions we're trying to answer. 
What is the history behind how LAFCOs were created? What is the commission's task with accomplishing? How did Kern LAFCO get more commissioners than anyone else? What is LAFCO's non-planning planning function? Who says LAFCO can do that? And there's a law that says they can. And now that I'm a commissioner, what did I get myself into? We'll start with the creation. And of course, God created the heavens and earth, but LAFCO had to wait till the 1960s before man created LAFCO. Uh, before the LAFCO enlightenment, there, there was a dark void where decisions were made by county supervisors and occasionally the state legislature. It was an imperfect system that was exposed when California's population boomed following, following World War II. As cities and special districts were scrambling to add much to their boundaries as, po as possible, politicians were put in the middle, having to make a decision between two or more agencies, wanting more and more um, politicians found themselves in a precarious position. Whatever decision they made was likely to set half or more of their constitu constituents, hard to say. That's a really good way of not getting reelected if you're a politician. So they did what any self-serving politician would do. They punted the responsibility to someone else. So voila, LAFCOs were created to bail out the politicians. While the politicians didn't want direct responsibility, they sure didn't want Sacramento to tell the locals where growth was supposed to go. So the solution was to create LAFCOs in each county. And in the long held tradition of Sacramento, they provided no direct funding. More on that funding piece later. Even without funding, Sacramento decided what LAFCO should focus on. LAFCO's purpose, uh, this slide is one of my favorite uh, in the entire presentation because I use it as a scorecard. Going down the list, please ask yourself pri privately, how good has LAFCO been at meeting these purposes? One, have orderly boundaries been encouraged? Two, have urban sprawl been discouraged? Three, how much agricultural and open space has been pre preserved? Four, has LAFCO created a structure of agencies that are efficient at providing public services? Five, what role has LAFCO played in supporting regional housing and adequate water supply? While I have my personal scoreboard, I hope each of you gives these questions more thought as we go through this presentation. As mentioned before, there's no state involvement, direct state, state involvement as mentioned previously. No Ministry of Appeal means that any challenge has to go through court and run the gauntlet of the legal system. This is what, hap what happened recently when Kern Lafka was sued over a CEQA issue. Not mentioned in this slide is that someone who is unhappy can then go to the state legislature and pass a bill. Except for rare circumstances, it's difficult to pass a bill that's retroactive, meaning that the, your stance is going to pro likely uh, continue to stand. Uh, these types of bills often appear in our legislative reviews that I give you every, t every once in a while during the year. And this happens when there's an impasse between agencies. When the politicians punted, they asked the state leg legislature to create a new structure. This was originally compass, uh, accomplished by the passing of the Knox Nesbitt Act in 1963. Different pieces were added over time to both strengthen LAFCO's authority, allow special districts to serve on LAFCO and clean up the code section affecting cities, special districts, and LAFCO culminating with the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Local Government Reorganization Act of 2000 that consolidates nearly all of LAFCO's authority in one place in the government code, changed the funding formula, and added additional authorities and responsibilities. This is the current structure in the government code and what you might hear staff referring to as CKH, Cortese Knox Hertzberg. One principle that's been consistent from the beginning was the ability and flexibility for LAFCO to structure their operations and authorities to meet their local needs. To keep local control of the process, a LAFCO was created in every county. The diversity of counties means there is also a diversity of structures under which each LAFCO operates. Larger LAFCOs, like Kern LAFCO, 
are typically, but not always, run by independent agencies. The smaller counties often operate out of the county's planning department. Some are even combined to have multiple counties under one executive officer. There's also a variety of how LAFCOs operate. The city of San Francisco and the county of San Francisco have the exact same boundaries. So the city and the special districts covering San Francisco, San Francisco will not likely challenge their, change their boundaries anytime soon. So without that work to do, the LAFCO for San Francisco mostly writes municipal service reviews on how the city and special districts are operated. Many LAFCOs have five commissioners. Current LAFCO has nine. There's also four alternates. No LAFCO is larger. Down at the bottom of the slide talks about special seats. In about 2007 through 2009, there was a controversy over the boundaries between Shafter and Bakersfield. Bakersfield was not on the commission at the time. Instead, they were part of the regular rotation between cities that will happen next month as Commissioner Crump from Maricopa steps down and Commissioner Bruin from Ridgecrest is added. Wanting a seat at the table, the city of Bakersfield pushed through legislation to provide the largest city of the county a permanent seat. To keep the numbers at odd, at odd, a ninth public member seat was added. So who does LAFCO reg, uh, regulate? It's one of the most frequent questions that I encounter. Another, another question is, uh, what is a special district? But that's for another presentation. Most on the do not include list are self-explanatory. I want to highlight JPAs and bridge and highway districts. Joint power agreements, coming referred to as JPAs, are not an agency that LAFCO forms, changes boundaries, gives them a sphere of influence. We do none of that. The LAFCO is the, is the depository of JPA contracts. When a Kern County-based agency enters into a JPA, they are required to send a copy of that agreement to LAFCOs. Several LAFCOs have been collected over the years, but we are aware several JPAs have been collected over the years, but are aware of others that have not, not supplied a copy. There is no penalty for not complying, so many don't. Secondly, bridge and highway districts. You might be aware there is a Greater Bakersfield separation, a grade district. It's the only district of its kind in the state. A bridge or highway district is different in that a separation of grade is different than a separation of grade district. Bridge and highway districts build and maintain bridges and roads. A separation of grade district, by comparison, only identifies crossings that may need a separation of grade. They then work with the local jurisdiction to find money to build, but the local agency builds and does the maintenance. So they are different. If separation of grade is a term that you're unfamiliar with, it's an overpass or underpass. What can LAFCOs do? This presentation is going to be very basic for a moment as I go through the definitions of the actions and authorities LAFCO is granted. An annexation means the inclusion, attachment, or addition of a territory to a city or district. A, a detachment means the exclu exclusion, deletion, or removal from a city or district of any portion of the territory of that city or district. Incorporation means the creation or establishment establishment of a city. Any area proposed for incorporation as a city shall have at least 500 registered voters residing within the affected territory at any time in the proposal pr pr the proposal is initiated. Disincorporation means the dissolution, extinguishment, or termination of the existence of a city and the cessation of its corporate powers, except for the purpose of winding up the affairs of the city. Formation means the creation of a district. Dilution means the disincorporation, extinguishment, or termination of, an ex of the existence of a district and the cessation of all of its corporate powers, except, for, except as the commission may otherwise provide uh, for the purpose of winding up the affairs of the district. Consolidation and merger. These two I get mixed up often. Consolidation means the uniting or joining of two or more cities located in the same county into a single new successor city or two or more districts into a single new successor district. A merger means the termination of the existence of a district when the responsibility of the functions, services, and assets 
and liabilities of that district are assumed by city as a result of uh, proceedings taken pursuant to that division. Strangely, there is not an official definition of extension of services in CKH. An extension of service is typically considered when a proposed property needs a special service, but not the full array of services for a city or special district. There's also an extension of services for emergency purposes. This happens in cases where, for instance, a water well fails and there is no potable water to a property. Laf LAFCO will approve an emergency hookup with an agreement that the service will end after a reasonable amount of time or the property will be annexed to the city or special district. A sphere of influence means a plan for the probable, probable, probable physical boundaries and services service area of a local agency as determined by the commission. That's the official definition. Unofficially, a sphere of influence serves as a bit of a peacekeeper, especially between cities. It says, hey neighbor, we're planning to build out to this particular boundary. Don't think about going there. A service review or a municipal service review means an analysis conducted by the commission documenting and analyzing the services in a particular geographic region or ge jurisdictional area pursuant to requirements of section 56 430. Latent service or powers means those services, facilities, functions, or powers authorized by the principal act under which the district is formed, but that are not being exercised as determined by the commission pursuant to, to subdivision I of section 56 425. Colonel AFCO does all of these actions listed in the slides except review fire contracts. And why doesn't LAFCO review fire contracts? Uh, because Kern is one of the few counties that does not have any fire districts. Back in the early 80s, all the fire districts in the county were dissolved and the authority to provide services was consolidated under Kern County Fire Department. Every five years or sooner, the commission reviews the sphere of influence of each city or municipal or special district. This is sometimes accomplished at the same time as a municipal service review for an agency. Municipal, municipal service reviews, often referred to as an MSR, takes a comprehensive look at the government agency to determine the capability of the agency to provide the services they wish to provide. And yes, staff is committed to working cooperatively with our member agencies and with the public at large. In this context, LAFCO has the ability to modify the boundaries of an agency. The services a special district can provide with the regulation of activity of active and inactive services. City services are always considered active whether the city provides a service or not. Some cases require a service to be extended outside the agency's boundaries without the need to do a full annexation or on an emergency basis as service is extended with a provision that there will be a later annexation. LAFCOs are prohibited from direct regulating land use. This is one of the few instances in code where LAFCO is especially prohibited from an, an authority. Land use regulation, for the most part, is regulated by the county, cities, and special districts through a general plan, zoning, conditional use permits, permits, and other means to decide what activities is appropriate in a specific part of that agency's jurisdiction. LAFCO doesn't have that authority. The commission has the ability to determine if necessary, if services can be adequately, adequately provided to a specific area. LAFCO staff often discuss sections of CKH during our presentations, but there are other sections of law that are equally important. The Brown Act, the Public Records Act, uh, all require LAFCOs and actions to be accomplished in the light of day and provide the public the ability to participate. The California Environmental Quality Act attempts to quantify the environmental impacts of projects and possibly mitigate those impacts. One concept that is good to understand it is the responsibility of a lead agency as opposed to, to a responsible agency. There are often municipal agencies involved in reg regulating a project Someone has to lead and others have to follow. The lead agency, as defined by CEQA, is the public agency, agency that has the primary responsibility for carrying out or approving a project. 
A responsible agency under CEQA is a public agency with some discretionary authority over a project or a portion of it, but which has not been designated as a lead agency. Most of the projects before this LAFCO are initiated by another agency, which makes them the lead agency and LAFCO the responsible agency. Revenue and taxation code comes into play on nearly every action taken by LAFCO. Where tax dollars flow for services uh, to be provided are often negotiated between the county who collects local taxes and the agency providing the services. This is called a tax split agreement. Conflict of interest is a serious issue for the integrity of the commission. As commissioners, you are responsible to inform the commission if you have a conflict of interest for any proceeding before the commission. And principal acts are the section of law that authorizes agencies on how their agencies will be operated and the types of services that may be provided. When going through the agenda packet, you might notice there are several of our forms that look like they belong in a court of law. The reason is that, is that the actions of LAFCO are considered both quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial. Quasi-legislative means that each LAFCO can create their own standards. The majority of CKH says may rather than shall. These are two most powerful words in legislation. The use of the word may provides discretion, shall allows no discretion. Uh, Mr. Schroeder can point to some exceptions to this interpretation by the courts, but that's a road too long for today's purposes. Quasi-judicial means the decisions that this commission makes are held to the same standard and ruling of, from a judge. Because LAFCOs are quasi-judicial, the only place to appeal is in the courts. In light of recent court rulings, I would disagree with that your decision is upheld as long as the decision is not arbitrary or capricious. Arbitrary and capricious is a standard for judi judicial review and appeal often seen in administrative law. Under this standard, the findings of a lower court, or in this case LAFCO, will not be disturbed unless it has no re reasonable basis, or if the judge decides without reasonable grounds or adequate consideration of the circumstances. This slide says all the right things, act in accordance with the state law, and locally adopt policies, comply with CEQA, and adopt findings. What this slide doesn't tell you is that there's still a lot of gray area even when you, are, you meet all of these criteria. For instance, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or SIGMA, is so new that the president has not been set or established. So there are still a lot of gray areas in which we need to work. By far, the majority of proceedings that come through LAFCO are, inherited, are initiated by other agencies, counties, city, or special district. These are handled by a resolution rather than a petition which would be the appropriate avenue for anyone other than a public agency. Whenever an agency informs staff they are interested in initiating a, a proceeding, a meeting is immediately requested. The more uh, questions staff can answer, ask and answer, the fewer problems there will be down the road. Even with seasoned planners, there's often issues that they do not foresee at the beginning. There are over 100 points of information that must be gathered in the process. Any number of them can send a process in a different direction often in, uh, causing an increase in time and money. Mr. Rice could dominate this whole hour with just discussing the application process and I'll try to pare it down. The key pieces of information needed are contained in the map, legal description, the resolution, the application, the CEQA document, and of course there's an initial payment that comes when we, hit, when we receive an application. Once an application appears to be complete, there's an additional information that will be needed from the surveyor, which is maps and legal description, assessor, which uh, handles tax value, overlapping agencies, tax rate areas, property owners within the proposed area, and property owners within 200 feet. Elections, uh, they tell us who all the uh, registered voters are, and the CAO's office takes care of the tax exchange. After getting all this information back from the county, there is another determination of completeness. If complete and the public hearing is required, the notice has to be sent out at least 21 days prior to the hearing. 
Staff report and recommendation needs to be completed a week prior to the hearing when the commission receives their agenda packet. It might be a surprise to learn that there is considerable amount of work that happens post hearing. The first three steps, reconsideration, protest hearing, and condition of approval are fairly common. Before documents are filed with the county recorder and board of equalization, there is a matter of final payment from the applicant for all of the external expenses. No pay, no reward, no record. If there isn't payment within a year, the proceeding is terminated regardless of the vote of the commission. I skipped through those really quick. Uh, LAFCO mis misconceptions. Mis the misconception most likely cite is that LAFCO is a county department. LAFCO, as configured locally, is a standalone agency authorized by the state. The most harmful mis uh, the misconception is that LAFCO is a rubber stamp for other local agencies. I hear that often. For those uh, who are familiar with local government operations, it will be of no surprise that CEQA, CEQA is a section of state law that most commonly draws litigation. Uh, commission needs to be aware of each of these topics as to not be placed in a position of vulnerability to litigation. And how do you avoid litigation? You don't cut corners. You provide sound evidence. You keep the public notified and ensure a hearing is fair. Sounds easy enough, easy enough, but the reality is that almost all information used to make findings are provided by either the applicant or the county. LAFCO generates very little raw information ourselves. Staff does our best to verify the information provided, but because there are cases where information is not accurate, LAFCO requires the applicant to sign an indemnification agreement holding LAFCO harmless if litigation is filed against the commission by a third party. The independence of LAFCO is a value that I try to instill in all of our efforts. It is always good to be aware of the politics within the decisions that are made. But that said, really great work happens when there's a focus on sound policy. And it's also helpful for commissioners to think of the county as a whole instead of individual communities. As your executive officer, this commission has provided me with a significant amount of trust to make everyday decisions and strong recommendations. It's a balancing act to both lead, yet not to overstep my authority. To continue the theme uh, of the previous slide, except for the two public members, everyone else on the commission represents a specific area of the county. While this is a rather large county, you're being asked to represent the public and the county as a whole. I'm behind again. Mm -hmm. Commissioner's role. I boil, it, boil that, this down to educate yourself, follow the law, provide leadership, and make Kern County a better place to live. Basically saying what it says up there, just in different words. Kern County has our own office, personnel and equipment. The commission appoints the executive officer and the executive officer hires staff. Legal counsel works for the commission, not the executive officer. That said, please go through the EO if there is a legal matter that legal counsel must address. Legal costs are a significant way to have the budget get out of control. I need to know what's being charged. Uh, if you have a legal issue with me, then you should inform the chair if you, if you need to go to counsel. That way some, a second person knows about it. I hope that never happens, but just so you're aware. Oh yes, LAFCO funding, you know, the one that the state didn't give us any money for. There are two components to yearly funding, fees and an assessment. Fees make up approximately 10% of the budget and are charged to the applicant for a base rate and external costs. These fees are less than the actual cost. If we relied on fees for a significantly bigger amount of the budget, there would need, 
there would have to be a rather large reserve to account for the swings and number of applications we get from year to year. The other 90% comes from a yearly assessment, paid one third each by the county, cities, and special districts. This is calculated based on the budget approved by the commission, plus unused sick and vacation pay. Subtract out fees and the carryover from the previous year, and that is the allocated to a third of each. One duty I'm not required to accomplish is collecting the yearly assessment from cities and special districts. The county is responsible for collecting, meaning I don't have to spend a bunch of time chasing down agencies to get paid. That's very nice. This slide has some nice words that sound nice, sound nice but here are my priorities. One, keep the commissioners happy. Two, make sure payroll is done. Make sure staff is happy. Comply with the law and keep commissioners in compliance with the law. This is a joint effort between myself and legal counsel. Four, make sure the tools are necessary to accomplish our objectives are available to us. Five, manage staff, agencies, media, and the public. Six, do the job. And seven, goes back to the beginning, keep the commissioners happy. The first bullet point here is an, is an emphasis for me. If commissioners know there will be a question for staff at a meeting, please give staff a heads up prior to the meeting. We want to provide you and all of the commission with answers needed to make a sound decision and inform the public. Current challenges, uh, municipal service reviews. We've talked about this in the past. Uh, we have a policy that's gone through the policy committee uh, is yet to come to the full commission. I hope to get that to you sometime soon. Uh, there are agencies that are in trouble and either need help or need to go away. There are other agencies that maybe, maybe were viable at the beginning, but as the world has changed, are too small to provide an efficient service. Water is always a challenge. Sigma makes it more difficult and easier to address water shortages all at the same time. Uh, there is more data now because they are tracking more water usage than they ever have in the past. So it's easier to find that, that information. With that, thank you for listening patiently. If commissioners have any questions or comments, please feel free, feel free to ask. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Knox. We have uh, any public comment? Seeing none. Moving on to commissioner comments or questions. Do we have anyone? Ms. Fowler. Thank you, Blair, for putting that together. I think that was helpful. It was a long haul, though, I will admit. Yes. Um, but it pleased me to see Commissioner Zaragoza and Clark taking pictures with their phones on some of, some of those slides, which indicates that we all have more to learn. And uh, that, that was very helpful. Uh, a couple of the things I liked, I reviewed it online first. and. Um, Commissioner's role, make decisions that are supported by uh, statute, local policies, and sound and comprehensive staff analysis. And commissioners are independent to exercise independent judgment on behalf of the public with the broader perspective representing the public as a whole. And for uh, Commissioner Zaragoza, Zoga, sorry, uh, as a public member and for me as a restricted public member uh, that's especially important for us I think so I thought that was terrific now if it goes on our eventual website can it be shared and can it be copied yes great both thank you on, on, on just one, one of your points um, while you represent all of the county as you're sitting here, it's great that you bring individual perspectives from your experience. Don't, don't think that you have to lose that when you walk in the door. Uh, you're all here because you know something and you have a passion for, for this county. So continue to bring that with you, please. I want to make one comment. Uh, Blair and I started here about the same time and we went to a conference our first conference, and his also in Santa Barbara, 
and him and I sat. <laughs> the first first session was the 101 in uh, uh, the conference, so uh, I remember that. These slides are borrowed from some of those conferences, yes. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel? We, we paid for it. Don't, don't, don't worry, we paid for it. Through the chair, I'd like to make a comment or two. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Okay, uh, I wrote down a couple uh, key points. Promote efficient public services. Um, one thing that I've appreciated um, is that this body, and of course uh, the executive officer, uh, Mr. Knox, has stood shoulder to shoulder with special districts uh, because he understands as you guys as the body understand the importance of being there and being relevant. And so I've appreciated his shoulder to shoulder approach long before I've you know, become a commissioner. And uh, that uh, is accentuated by his service to this, to this body. So I appreciate that as a, as a uh, president of the Kern County Special District Association, uh, but also as a, as a board member, because I've seen it firsthand and I've seen the tangible results and the hard work that he's provided. So um, second thing, it's more of a question, encourage orderly boundaries. Is that subjective or is that something? <laughs> it is a bit subjective. Uh, on purpose, I put this map behind me so it would be in the presentation. This yeah. is the, the, a map of the districts, the 82 districts that provide I shouldn't say district. The 82 agencies that provide services in the Metro Bakersfield area. Think about that, 82 districts um, for one metro area. That's, I, I don't know anybody yet who has said, oh, that seems like a reasonable number. Yeah. The question comes is when you start talking about, well, which ones do we eliminate? Oh no, not mine, we're special. And, Les has had conversations with some of his peers in, in Taft about consolidating some districts in the Taft area and under one possibly a community service district that would handle all of unincorporated Taft. Uh, and he's running into some of the same struggles I've run into. So we, we are compadres in that, in that way. Yeah, and I, you know, to that note, um, it's time for some of the special districts to quote unquote circle the wagons uh, because funding is not what it once was um, due to the downturn of the oil industry. Uh, and, um, and, and those hard discussions uh, are going to have to be had at some point. So I will. Yet nor normally uh, these kind of barrel prices, we would see oil production ramping up, not going the other way, but because of the policies out of Sacramento, uh, I, Personally, I don't see tax revenues for Kern County going up anytime soon. So districts, that will affect cities, that will affect districts. Uh, and we should be looking at ways that we can do it more I, efficiently. I said on the council some years ago, uh, 20 plus years ago, and I remember a gentleman came to talk in front of the diocese and he said, uh, I'm not sure why we have a mosquito abatement. I haven't been bit by any mosquitoes. <laughs> you know, so, you know, the, the, the thing of it is, is when you, when you, you lose services uh, in terms of special districts, uh, you don't know it really truly until it's gone. And, uh, you know, just to kind of accentuate your point. So Thanks. thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Saragosa. Um, I appreciate the comments from my fellow commissioners. Uh, quite well taken. I agree. A um, couple of things, and one is a observation. Uh, I know the answer to the question, but it just wants to be um, maybe put out there in the public arena. There is no LAFCO is not involved with any type of uh, jurisdiction over federally recognized tribes. Correct. Correct. So I believe there might be one or two in the county. Uh, I know that th there are some developments going on. And so we are not involved. Uh, maybe we could be asked to be involved because I'm sure there's going to be a need for regional planning services for those areas. Yes, in the district in the area of casino. That'd be top two. Oh, uh, that's Metler. 
So on, on your point uh, on the Hard Rock Casino, we have actually met with the Mettler Water District mm. to see if there was a possible way for them to work together with the, with the mm. casino. And the casino basically said no. Uh, they're going to do everything themselves. They're going to have their own water wells, their own um, mm. sewer system, and not share with the community. Wow. Um, they originally... Said, so, well, you can join, but you have to pay fifty percent of the uh, of the cost to, to build this. When there's like twenty five homes out there, uh, there's no way that they're going to be able to afford to do, afford to do that. So uh, they're being left on the sidelines, and the casino is is doing a, all of it themselves. Interesting. Well, okay. Uh, the other point I was going to make, and I think uh, um, to some degree, staff would be maybe uh, should be uh, um, uh, congratulated is that I assume there are different uh, services that LAFCO could provide, but each one typically requires an application of some sort, correct? Correct. And that application has to be filled out properly by whoever is the applicant, correct? Therefore, <laughs> the question I want to know is, is it being done correctly the first time, or is there a lot of holding of hands by LAFCO staff? Is there anything we can do to become, in other words, minimize the time and errors and to be more efficient? And if that requires some type of 101 application training, something I believe my fellow Commissioner Margaret mentioned, if so, or a handbook or a seminar, I'm just throwing it out there for comment. I'm going to let Bud answer the first part of your question. He's the one who deals with the engineers and planners on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, yes, you are correct. When we receive an application, uh, nine times out of ten, I will send it back uh, with comments and have it corrected. Uh, a lot of the special districts and, and some of the cities don't have the resources to find out everything in there. So they go with what they what they think is correct, and so a lot of times I'm correcting that and then pointing them to the uh, information where they can retrieve that information. Not just because, I mean, I can get it, yes, but they need to know where to get it as well. So we do work together hand in hand with that. Uh, we make sure that the applications as well as the maps and legal descriptions meet all of the legal requirements that we have to review. And then we also make sure that uh, all the timelines and everything are on there so that they are very well, well aware of what we have to watch out for, for notices and all of this, that it can't be done in a very quick manner. It can, but if they don't give me the right information, it cannot. So, so we do work with them, and we do that quite often. Right. I know, I know you do. Personally, after talking to you many times about this, but you're not doing their work. They're doing the work. Because your work is, you're really busy doing other types of things. Uh, we don't have the luxury of providing a circuit rider planner to do the LAFCO work for them. And if we did, that'd be great. But I don't know that we have the funding for that. But they're becoming more knowledgeable. Is it because of turnover or they're just too busy? I mean, that's the reason for the question, too. Okay, so this goes back to LAFCO but it's also back on the special districts. What you're actually getting to is the reason they don't have that information is because there's not current municipal service reviews. If there was current municipal service reviews, they would have somewhere to go look for them. Oh. We don't, it's up to LAFCO to write them municipal service reviews and any special district and city that provides a munis municipal service is supposed to have one on file with us. It's supposed to be updated every five years or whatever sphere is amended. Uh, this doesn't happen. There's no punishment if it doesn't happen other than us say, make sure it happens before your next annexation. Uh, but if that information was there, then yes, it would be readily available for them. So that begs the question, well, what's the status on municipal service reviews for no, outstanding I'm, cities? I'm going to refer to the policy committee. <laughs> <laughs> the policy committee did hear a, um, or see a draft of a 
municipal policy, municipal review policy. Um, I need to work on it some more. My biggest concern is we do, we don't have staff to handle that many. Uh, yeah, there's there's 180 special districts. If we did one on every one of them, we would have a staff of 30 or 40, and that's just not affordable at this point. Uh, we could stagger them. Uh, another idea we have is to only do uh, districts initially that do water, sewer, or fire. If they want to do one of those three, they would need to do a municipal service review. That would whittle it down to about 30, and that's so we would do over five years, we'd do six a year. Um, but even that will take a considerable amount of staff time to, to happen. So we have so many other projects going on. I'm, I'm hesitant to, to bring that forward because once I do bring it forward and if you approve it, I'm now on the hook. I now have to start, I, I, I have to come up with the budget and everything else to do that, so. I'm not going to mention anything else other than the fact that I'm good to know. I didn't know that it was that there was a backlog that much. I know yes. that we talked about it at the uh, policy committee meeting, and uh, I think I suggested we look at recreation too. It seems to be a, a big uh, service item, but good to know. Perhaps that should be discussed uh, next time for some strategic planning purposes. But thank you for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> Any more uh, commissioner questions, concerns? See none. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, was there a motion? Let me see. Got me. No vote required. This is an informational. Um, that would lead us. We have no closed session. Moving on to uh, German. If there's no future business to discuss, our next scheduled meeting is May 15, 2024. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second, Fowler. Motion by Commissioner Clark, second by Commissioner Fowler. Please vote. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Commission Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All eyes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Meeting adjourned, 615.